Some successes and some shortcomings. That's how community leaders say Billings fared after lawmakers wrapped up the 2019 legislature. One of the biggest issues with Billings in mind, the 406 Impact District Bill, which would have created a funding mechanism for the development of One Big Sky. But despite massive chamber support, the bill never made it off the ground, failing on the Senate floor by just two votes. Since there was a lot of interest and engagement, the Billings Chamber says the issue could make a comeback in the 2021 legislature. Although that didn't pass, an $80 million bonding bill did, and it will fund economic development and infrastructure projects across Montana. In our region, $1.3 million will go to Makoshika State Park for water lines and trails across Billings. $400,000 is dedicated to the Moss Mansion. There was also a pair of human trafficking bills that passed. They will require massage parlors to have proper credentials. Looking ahead to the 2021 legislature, many of the key issues that lawmakers dealt with in Helena this year will likely resurface in two years, like Medicaid expansion and the future of the coal strip plants and transmission lines. There are so many things that are going to essentially need to be redebated and reanalyzed in 2021, even Medicaid expansion. I mean, we've got a new sunset on the renewed Medicaid expansion. We're going to have to see how the thing functions in two years, whether it's Medicaid expansion, whether it's what we're doing with transmission across the state, starting at Coal Strip and moving west. Um, you know, we, we will start with, I think, many of the same issues uh, as 2021 session convenes as we had to deal with in 2019. And baseload power is, is important to back up renewables, of course. But it's especially important to Yellowstone County because our three refineries are industrial customers and they need very reliable power. They, they can't afford to have the lights go off. It, it needs to be on 24-7, 365 for them. And, you know, there's an, an imminent closure of Coal Strip 1 and 2. They, they will be closing before 2022. Uh, that's where that industrial power is generated now. And while many of the issues will be familiar in 2021, we will have a new governor and likely new legislative leaders, leading to a new political dynamic and perhaps different outcomes. In news out of Rosebud County, authorities are investigating a death after a body was pulled from the Tongue River. These are images of the scene where federal authorities recovered the body near Ashland. We are told the family has been notified and an autopsy is scheduled for today. Both the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the FBI are investigating. A Red Lodge man is facing assault charges after prosecutors say he caused a nine-month-old baby potentially life-threatening injuries, including fractures to the child's skull. Nathan Polikoff is not in custody and is scheduled to appear in court later this month. He's charged with two counts of felony assault on a minor for incidents that happened on April 17th and 19th. The child's mother lives in Billings and was staying with Polikoff in Red Lodge. On the first occasion, the mother said Polikoff was checking on the baby in another room and and then heard a thump. When she came into the room, the baby vomited. Polikoff claimed the baby rolled off the futon. Then two days later, Polikoff offered to clean the baby in the shower after it spit up. And after they were alone, he called out for help, saying the baby had stopped breathing. A doctor told authorities the baby's injuries were consistent with being violently slammed into something. Several bars and restaurants at the private Yellowstone Club at Big Sky now face multiple liquor license violations, and state revenue officials are proposing to revoke their rights to sell. Documents filed last month state two of the establishments had been serving alcohol without a license and hid the alcohol in a nearby parking garage when a state inspector examined the premises in January. The inspector was tipped off a week later and returned to find a fully stocked bar. The state seized more than 7,000 bottles and cans of liquor, beer and wine, plus 31 kegs. State officials say they also discovered the four Yellowstone Club establishments had stored liquor at unlicensed warehouses west of Bozeman for as long as seven years, which is not allowed under state law. The Yellowstone Club is a private residential club with its own ski hill and golf course. The club's attorneys have asked that the charges be heard before an administrative officer at the Revenue Department. State and federal law enforcement officials have announced a joint training 
session aimed at helping investigators and the public address missing persons cases, particularly those involving Native Americans. The joint training with the U.S. and Montana Departments of Justice will offer training in Helena in June. A law enforcement portion will provide information on accepting and entering missing persons reports. A public training section will give information on various databases and alerts. The training is free and post credits are available for law enforcement officers. Space is limited to 250 people with priority given to tribal and law enforcement representatives. Online registration is available at dojmt.gov mpt. Northwestern Energy will get more help from the sun to power homes in Montana. The company says it will purchase the energy from Metal Arc Solar, a 20 megawatt solar project to be developed near Billings. The contract will help Northwestern Energy fulfill its renewable power obligations. The solar project is expected to be complete by the end of 2021. Well, the numbers keep climbing as pertussis makes its way north. There are now 32 confirmed cases across Missoula County schools, and now the French Town School District northwest of Missoula says it has a student with the sickness. Cases have also been confirmed in the Lolo and Florence school districts. Students, teachers, and staff, past and present, are celebrating a school's 100th anniversary. Q2 Jenny Fix sat down with a teacher who spent 15 years of his career at Orchard School, and it just happens to be someone very special to her. So we're here at Orchard Elementary. Um, we're celebrating our 100 year anniversary. We're excited to be here in honor of the, the students that we currently have as well as the alumni. So how do you celebrate a century? To go with the trifecta, so food, music, and games. Orchard's a neighborhood school. It's a generational school, so a lot of our um, parents have come to school here. And so um, it's cool for them to come back to our school and just kind of see how things have changed over the years. Orchard has been improved upon many times in the past 100 years. And then they took down the original building. So the facilities and just the programs that they have, uh, they have an extra, they have two principals now, which is wonderful for here. I mean, I just think it's blooming. Certain culture here that even if they move away, they still are drawn back. Just the overall, their friendliness, they care about each other. Yeah, I like that. Alumni could walk down the halls again and take a look back. Alumni including one man who holds Orchard near and dear to his heart, my grandfather. Grandpa Fick spent most of his teaching career at Orchard. Well, I was here for 15 years and we had six principals. So I, I don't know, I think he wore them out. And oh, did he have some memories. Well, back there in the 70s, I'm not sure of the year, Principal Ted came back from the uh, principal's meeting. He said, I've got a big announcement that uh, female teachers will be allowed to wear a nice pantsuit occasionally. It was kind of earth shattering at the time. There was no shortage of reminiscing, reunions of past co-workers, students, even children and grandchildren of former students he had encouraged or influenced. He gave everybody a chance to shine. Curriculum may be a little different now. Being that agriculture is so important in this state, I uh, took kids on field trips, uh, like to the cattle sale, and boy, they were surprised. They'd never seen anything like a cow going to the bathroom. Clearly, a lot has changed. But one constant? One thing that I enjoyed was uh, parents uh, sending such good kids. It's really rewarding to be here because the kids love the attention that you give them. And, and it's just, I don't know, it's just a very special place. <laughs> a meaningful 100 years for Orchard School. Here's to 100 more. In Billings, Jenny Fick, MTN News. Jenny tells us there was also an exhibit contributed by the Western Heritage Center on the development and history of Billings Southside.